Hello and welcome our beloved viewers to RTD's News English Edition. As usual, begin to net news with the major and top highlights. Let's follow. Return of the President of the Republic to Djibouti from Nairobi, the capital of Kenya. The head of state takes part in the investiture ceremony of his new Kenyan counterpart. And in the international scene, the European Union divided on the principle of a gas price cap. Those were our major top highlights. Welcome back to our newsroom, our blood viewers. The President of the Republic, His Excellency Mr. Ismail Omar Agali, returned to the country this Tuesday in the middle of the evening after attending during the day in Nairobi the inauguration ceremony of his new Kenyan counterpart, Mr. William Ruto. The inauguration ceremony of Mr. Ruto took the appearance of a general communion of Kenyans who gave the full measure of their deep attachment to their living together in cohesion and unity. This event was, among others, marked by the speech made by the new Kenyan president at the podium dedicated to his inauguration. In this speech, Mr. William Ruto emphasized his determination to combat social insecurity, particularly through a massive job creation, he said. The President of the Republic, His Excellency Mr. Ismail Umar Gale, went this morning to Nairobi, capital of Kenya, where he took part in the inauguration ceremony of the fifth President of Kenya, Mr. William Ruto. Upon his arrival at the Jumu Kenyatta International Airport in Nairobi, the President of the Republic, Mr. Ismail Umar Gale, was welcomed by an important Kenyan delegation. In addition to the President of the Republic, about 20 heads of state were gathered in Nairobi to attend the swearing-in ceremony of the new Kenyan President. The president was accompanied by a strong delegation, including the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Mahmoud Ali Yusuf, and the Ambassador of Djibouti in Kenya, Mr. Yasin El Mibouh. It should be noted that the Republic of Djibouti and Kenya have excellent relations and partnerships in different key areas.
The new Kenyan president, Mr. William Ruto, was sworn in by the crowd of thousands of people gathered at the Karasani Stadium. The vice president of Kenya, Mr. Riga Tikashoga, to, then took the oath in the presence of the country's judge, Martha Kome. The new president said in a speech that the Kenyan people are more united than ever to face the current challenge and added that he will do everything possible to preserve, protect, and defend the constitution of Kenya in the interest of the Kenyan people. Several groups of dancers and singers attended before the new president of Kenya took a walk. About 14 heads of state and government, including the President of the Republic, His Excellency Mr. Ismail Umar Gale attended the ceremony which was held at the Kasarani Stadium, the largest in the capital of Nairobi, with more than 10,000 people gathered for the inauguration ceremony of the President of Kenya. That is the oath of allegiance of the office of president. I, I, Redavi Nachagua, in full realization, in full realization of the high calling, of the high calling, I assume as deputy president, I assume as deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, of the Republic of Kenya. Thank you very much. Tumpongeze kwa makofi anapopokezwa katiba ya Jamhuri ya Kenya. Rais kwa makofi anapopokea kitara hichi. Na ni dhahiri shairi kwamba anakuwa mrijeshi mkuu wa majeshi yote ya ulinzi ya Kenya. Prime Minister Mr. Abdul Ghadir Kamil Mohammed went late today to the water distillation plant in Dorali to see the progress of repair work of the water pipeline facilities. Accompanied by the Director General of Onyad, Mohammed Fouad, the Prime Minister met with the operations managers of the Spanish company during his uh, career, which saw him occupy the direction of Onyad. The Prime Minister was able to understand and analyze the explanation provided by the operational teams on the ground. The Minister of Health, Dr. Ahmed Robler, received in his office the courtesy country visit of the Global Fund to fight AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria, led by the Djiburian Portfolio Manager for the Global Fund, Mrs. Jessica Patra. Note the presence of the Acting Secretary General, uh, Mr. Abdul Ghadir Mohammed Garad, the President of the CCM, uh, Mr. Mohammed Saad, and several senior officials of the Ministry of Health who attended this working meeting. The discussion focused primarily on ways to strengthen cooperation between the Department of Health and the international institution, and secondly, on the implementation of the transition and preparation of the new funding cycle 2024-2026. To this end, the Ministry of Health first thanked and welcomed the team of Global Fund and the Republic of Djibouti and recalled all the actions taken by his department in monitoring of priority health programs. 
On the 13th, the Chief of General Staff of the Armed Forces, Lieutenant General Zakaria Sheikh Ibrahim, presided over the closing ceremony of the seminar dedicated to signals officers held at the Camp Montaigne. The seminar began on Saturday 10 and ended today under the leadership of the Commander of the Signals, Commander uh, Saeed Abdullah Hussein. The objective was to improve the quality of the cell transmission ADF, strengthening cohesion within the staff of transmission, identifying problems related to the communication within in the Army in general, improving the operational capacity of signals. In short, a real gain in technical and tactical competence was recorded these three days of cinema. Indeed, the initiative led by the single command in the white way between the commander and the single officers. This initiative is the first one of the knowledge sharing and an issue related to the difficulties that manifest themselves, the sharing of message to the different bodies that constitute the armed force of Djibouti. This visit saw the participation of the Chief of General Staff, General Tahir Ali Mohammed, the Deputy Chief of Defense Staff, Colonel Major Mohammed Kayad Gelle, and Lieutenant Colonel Ibrahim Zakaria Sheikh Ibrahim, and the Director of General of the International Relations Department, and some high ranking officers. Taking the word of the Chief of General Staff of the Armed Forces, General Zakaria Sheikh Ibrahim, first greeted all participants and officers present at this ceremony of the end cinema. The Chief of General Staff of the Armed Forces was keen to congratulate the Commander, Commander of Signals, to continue the initiative for the good approach of know how and sharing of ideas within the unit of transmission. Without leaving out, the Chief of General Staff of the Armed Forces assisted those who participated in the cinema to transmit and train to the staff of knowledge acquired during the ceremony. The Chief of General Staff of the Armed Forces ordered that the training must be always of our priorities in order to meet the challenge that arise. The event was closed by a refreshment and a handing over of a gift to the Chief of the General Staff of the Armies. Indeed, the Chief of General Staff of the Armed Forces congratulated and encouraged the Signals Unit for the quality of work and self-sacrifice. At the end of the ceremony, certificates of appreciation and gifts were distributed. Let's follow. <laughs> As part of the activities of registration on the electrical rules, the Ministry of Youth and Culture, in collaboration with the Ministry of Interior, has scheduled an honorary campaign in all the CDCs of Djibouti City and those of the regions of the interior. In this perspective, this initiative, started by Her Excellency, the Ministry of Youth and Culture, Dr. Hibo Momin Asawi, is part of the work agenda of her department to prepare and mobilize young people, especially first-time voters, in the legislative election 2023. In this sense, I contracted and combined effort with all the stakeholders uh, remains necessary to carry out this mission in Djibouti City in the interior regions. Uh, this activity will take place in the platforms of the Ministry of Youth and Culture. The prefectures will move within these structures to proceed directly to the registration of the young people mobilized for this purpose, provided with their identity cards, recalling the urgency and importance of this work. Uh, they requested that the CDCs can get down to the task and relay the instructions of registration. Two primary meetings were organized with the Ministry of Youth and Culture to consult all the stakeholders on the ins and outs and the objective to be achieved during the next meetings. Finally, the Ministry of Youth and Culture is pleased with the availability and the exemplary cooperation of the deconcentrated services of the Ministry of Interior. Following the example of the country affected by the disease called measles, the activities of the measles vaccination were launched yesterday morning in Dikhil at the CMH center of the Dikhil region. A vast operation of measles vaccination which spread, spread on the localities of Yobuki in the city of Dikhil and which aims to vaccinate thousands of children from five months to five years. 
In one of the speeches given during the activities of this vaccination, the head doctor of the regional health center reminded all the mothers with children from five months to five years old to take part and to come close in order to be able to vaccinate their children against this contagious disease and not to miss this vaccination for the health of their children. In the context of promoting entrepreneurship, the Young Entrepreneurs Club in Ali Sibih organized a closing ceremony for a series of training courses. These training courses fall within the framework of the national policy aimed at promoting and uh, promoting Djiburi entrepreneurship. This course aims primarily at enabling young people to establish activities uh, and projects that will rule them and income and great job opportunities for others by providing training, support, and gathering funding to implement their projects. The Center for Internship was established by the government seeks to empower Djiburian youth in the field of business in order to enhance their contribution to economic and social development and support them to become active elements in their societies. On Sunday, in the meeting room of the Regional Council of Arta, an information exchange session on the project participation of civil society and governments and local development was held. This project is financed by the European Union and implemented by the International Association of Francophone Mayors under the institutional anchorage of the Minister of Interior. The general objective of the mission is to exchange with the members of the Regional Development Coordination Committee and civil society organizations and the projects on the guidelines of the call for proposals in the direction of civil society organizations for the realization of concrete projects in coherence with the local development priorities of the region, which is part of one of the project components. More specifically, the exchange should allow the project management team to collect observations and comments on the contact on the guidelines, particularly on the priority teams in each region. Shifting towards the international scene now, Blue Origins rocket launch vehicle crashed shortly after liftoff on Monday in West Texas. Jeff Bezos' company announced saying the Caspel may have separated from the rest of the rocket. This is a blow to the company and to firstly competitive space, tourism industry, Alto, Vires were there. Pardon me, our beloved viewers, we move towards the international scene now. A Blue Origins rocket launch vehicle crashed shortly after liftoff on Monday in West Texas. Jeff Bezos' a company announcing the castles may have separated from the rest of the rocket. This is a blow to the company and to the firstly competitive spare tourism industry. A lot to observers note the potential passengers would likely have survived the accident, the first of its kinds of the Blue Origin. And the European Commission is considering capping the price of imported gas in order to reduce the energy bill. The option is far from enormous, and last week it even revealed the divisions between the 27 ministers in charge of energy. By this hour, blog, we conclude this edition. Please pardon us for the technical error made by the Rigi team. Uh, have a wonderful evening. Thank you once again.